Hi folks, I'm Angela and you are at Angela's Crystal Corner and we're having Angela's Crystal Talk on behalf of the Edgar Casey ARE, which is the Association of Research and Enlightenment in Virginia Beach. Uh, I kind of try to follow the same format when I'm doing a video for you and so that you know newcomers will know kind of how we do it and hopefully uh, you'll come back. We do this once a month and it's the fourth Tuesday of every month. And if you didn't know, hopefully you did, Edgar Casey was a famous psychic uh, and he lived in Virginia Beach and he created the ARE for uh, teaching people about natural medicine and psychic ability, etc. It's a wonderful place to go visit. You can learn a lot about him there. Um, he was a Christian and he was very kind. He was very generous with his gift uh, and he was an awesome uh, psychic. Uh, he did not know what he was saying when he was doing his readings because he was in a trance-like state and he had his uh, secretary writing everything he said so that she could give it to the client. Um, but he was very prolific and very kind and he advocated for kindness in doing things in a Christ-like manner. That being said, it's an open show. It doesn't matter what your spirituality is or or any of that. There's no judgment here. This is supposed to be fun. And for me, crystals are fun. They're my favorite thing. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you some things about them and hopefully get you to open your mind a little bit about vibrational medicine and the, the, the soft, subtle energies that they can help you with. Um, and what we kind of do is I'll do a reading of Edgar Casey's uh, and then I'll highlight some stones and I will answer questions if I get a chance to. Um, but I wanted to, to talk about sadness and depression tonight, and I thought about it to begin with. It's just a morbid subject, you know. How, how are people going to be attracted to talk about that? But in the holidays, it's just so prolific that everyone, not, I'm not going to say everyone, but a lot of people have depression and sadness that they don't talk about. And it's very difficult to deal with, especially if you've had loss, <clears throat> you've lost family members, or any other kind of losses, you know, with us, with coronavirus, people have lost jobs, family members, you know, all kinds of loss has happened the past couple of years. So I just wanted to talk about it to put it on the table, first of all, because it isn't talked about enough. People don't acknowledge it enough. And, you know, once you uh, talk about something, it loses its steam and you can move on to something positive. Um, I've had enough depression in my past and anyone that has lived a few years and has any kind of dysfunction or anything like that in their past may have some sadness in their life. So that being said, I want us to get past that and try to be happy. And I think gratitude is a real good way to do that. So it's Thanksgiving's perfect time to think about what you're grateful for. And um, I also wanted to start with a little bit of cleansing because we go over this a lot about stones and energy and how it, they pick up energy and you kind of want to keep them cleansed spiritually as well as yourself. And my favorite way is sage. <clears throat> and that's Native American. This is a sage bundle that's kind of like a little, you know, tightened at the end here. And I've shown you this before, but again, there's people I know that haven't seen my show before. And this is uh, thanks to my hairdresser, who's also my spiritual sister, Angie. Hopefully she's out there. She suggested this, and it's great, because when you see people using sage, they light up the whole bundle, and they blow it out, and there's smoke, a lot of smoke. You don't have to do that. You can just pull off one little piece. You can take your bundle of whatever it is and pull off one piece, and that'll last you a good while, actually. So I've got one started, and I wanted to just do a cleanse for us so we could have a spiritual cleanse for all of us right now, just in, in metaphor, so to speak, but I'm lighting it. This is one I've already lit before, but I'm lighting it up. I can see that it's got smoke starting already, so I'm happy with the amount of smoke here. This is how you sage anything, by the way. It's Native American. It's natural. Um, Native Americans would sage and, and smudge for good things, to celebrate, to uh, renew, to clear out. So it serves several purposes. Generally speaking, smoke takes negative energy out of the house. If you're trying to get negativity out, you want to have a window or two opened because you want a place for it to escape. And they use feathers a lot of times. People use feathers. This is one a friend made of mine. It's got an amethyst on it. 
it's a bunch of feathers, so to speak, but you want to just get the smoke around the room, and I go clockwise around each room and around the house, and I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, light in, darkness out. Anything dark leaves, and, and that's kind of how I do it. But this is for us. This is a metaphor. I want us to all feel cleansed tonight. Um, and we're going to start on trying to not be depressed this season, if you can help. So, stones have a vibration. And what Edgar Casey's thought was, and what my thought is, is when you want to fix your vibration, you want to pick a stone that kind of will take you there. And generally, when you're feeling bad or, or upset, uh, it's a lower vibration. So you get yourself with a stone that kind of does what you think it might do for you, and it helps you lift your vibration. So let me, let me go ahead and read this one reading from Edgar Casey. And this is for, um, this is where he reads about his, the spiritual end of things. He says, hence the higher forces may come through, the spiritual influences in life of the soul may be found by finding first in self what is my ideal and in seeking to know what the kingdom within is within and that the standards are those given by the prince of peace if the associations and in seeking into psychic or soul forces in the activities are ever surrounded by the blessings of the Christ there may come only good fall not ever surrounding self in that environment or I'm sorry fail not in ever surrounding self with that environment so he was a he was a, a carrier of good and positive and he helped an awful lot of people he wore himself out and passed away relatively early I cannot speak for him but I would imagine he had some sadness in his life in not being able to help as many people as he wanted to and that it made him so tired because those readings you know were pretty long and uh, I do some readings here and there and they do it drains you and I know psychics that get very drained by reading so um, I wanted to just show you some crystals that I like for general feeling good purposes, etc. And we'll start with the worst end of things, which is grief. <clears throat> and I lost my father back in 2016, so I paid a lot of attention to grief stones. One of them that I don't have is blue agate, or, you know, it's called banded blue agate. And it's, it's I, ha I gave it away to somebody that needed it, so I don't have a lot of that stone. It's not... I'm not really attracted to it that much. It's, you know, very light colored kind of striped. You don't see through it because agate generally is not a see-through type stone. But it's one I held a small one in my pocket a lot when I was feeling bad. And then another one is lepidolite. Lepidolite is a mica-like formed stone. And it, it looks like mica, but it's purple. And that's how it's naturally formed. And these are just natural pieces of lepidolite. Uh, and that's L-E-P-I-D-O-L-I-T-E. -E. And these are some some stone pieces that have lepidolite in them. And lepidolite can be polished out too. It's a little harder to polish because it is so kind of fragile, but I have some polished pieces that I thought I would show you too. This is a polished piece of lepidolite. Lepidolite has lithium in it. I have a friend that has a mine, a lepidolite mine in California. And when you hold on to it, you get the properties of the lithium. She actually gives it to kids who come in and who are you know, rambunctious and, and excitable, and it's very calming for them. I have little stones that I give to kids, and it, I see that they do calm down with it, but it also helps with grief and sadness. It's a good stone to have for that reason. Um, and some of my favorites are my carvings. My little moon head, this is a lepidolite moon head. <laughs> I have friends that say that they're creepy. I think they're my friends, so I don't think they're creepy. Here's a big one, Mr. Moonhead. I think they're watching me and protecting me. I think they're helpful. Um, but Lepidolite light is a great stone to have around. It's, it's peaceful. You can have it in your bedroom. It's, you can sleep with it. Pretty cool. Um, another one is Celestite. I've shown you Celestite before, I believe, when I was telling you don't get it wet in cleansing. This is Celestite, this beautiful blue shimmery crystal. And as always, you can email me at Angie's Crystal Corner. That's A N G S Crystal Corner at gmail.com with any questions or if you're interested in purchasing any crystals, we can arrange anything that we need to do to help you. Um, there's a little one, a little baby. Again, you cannot get this wet, it will fall apart. You will have the smaller pieces of crystal, which are great, but I don't think you want your big piece to fall apart. And then, oh, there's a nice one, a big. Big, beautiful, big, beautiful blue one. 
I just love the way those blue crystals shimmer in there. Okay, so celestite is a stone of the angels. It's supposed to help you get closer to angels and, and those higher great forms of being. It's very calming and it does help you feel better and less depressed, so to speak. Um, another one we talked about before is smoky quartz. And I will tell you this, a lot of stones have varying principles. The smoky quartz is a protective stone, but it's also an antidepressor stone. They have multiple functions, all of them do. And again, uh, one of my favorite philosophies that I tell everyone is take what you like and leave the rest. If you don't like what I'm saying, that's okay. Just you don't have to listen or, or you can keep listening for something you might like, but you will find in the, in the crystal world that there are many opinions and some people get really fastidious in those opinions. I don't feel that way because I know they are so buried and they can offer you a different healing method than someone else. You know, you might like a certain stone for a certain thing. I might not like it for that. It doesn't matter. This is supposed to be fun. It's not that hard. Um, and because they are vibrational medicine, they they have many different facets that can help you. Just kind of like essential oils. It's a natural healing method that offers different a variety of things. One oil can do four or five different things. So that being said, let me show you some of my, a couple of smoky quartzes. Like I said, I showed you some recently anyway. But this is one of my favorites. It's a it's it's polished, but it was found you know like this. It's a twin. Gorgeous, just gorgeous. Now, smoky quartz is supposed to take negative energy, transmute it to positive energy. So if you're feeling bad, it's, it is a very comforting stone. I have found it to be very comforting, uh, and I have it beside of my bed, too. Um, it just seems to bring about that kind of peace, um, and you know it's protective, too, because it's taking care of the negative energy in the, in the room. Here's another beautiful piece. Um, it's got a lot of rainbows in it, and I've kind, of, I've kind of hinted to you before. You see that beveled edge on the bottom? That is indicative of a Brazilian polish. You can almost always be sure it was, you know, cut and polished in Brazil if you see that beautiful um, beveled edge. Um, recently, I don't see that many of those. I, it, a lot of them come out of different areas. China, for one, I never see that on those stones. It's, they're rough on the bottom. But Smoky is a beautiful, multifunction, soft stone. Another one that brings you into the realm of angels is Blue Angelite. And it's, it's not shimmery like the, the celestite is, but it's very, very peaceful stone to hold on to. It's one that I like a lot. Um, and when we're talking about grief again, another really, really good stone for that is called Danburite. That's D-A-N-B-U-R-I-T-E, Danburite. And it comes formed like this with these little flat, you see that little flat diamond piece right there? This is pink, by the way, pink Danburite. That's a, that's a really good grief stone. I held on that to, to that a lot when my father passed. Um, there's another one. It's just, I love the formation of Danburite. It's, it kind of reminds me of black tourmaline actually, but it's not the same. It just has these neat flat formations at the top and it's a good grief stone. Um, I was going to tell you about lithium quartz too. Regular quartz comes in lithium quartz, and you can see the pinkish tone to it. Again, just like with lepidolite, you're dealing with lithium. Lithium is a calming mineral, so it's good to hold on to, and it's very calming. This is a nice little twin that I have. Can you see the twin formation there somewhere? There it is. Yeah. So, um, oh, and the other one, yeah, that covers that. Oh no, one more before I get to the last one. Rose quartz is, it would be, appear to be obvious, right? This is a natural rose quartz, naturally found that way. It's found, it's, found, it's prolific everywhere. You can find it anywhere. But rose quartz is a love stone. It gives love and brings you love. It it's just makes love go in a circle. So it would be a natural, you know, one to choose for depression or sadness. Um, I have a couple of other points. I have lots of rose quartz. I have it all over the outside of my house as well because it just, it's one of those stones you want to have plenty of because it doesn't hurt us to have as much love as we can have, right? Um, this one has got some inclusions of hematite, which is, you can see the gold rust color. I love inclusions in stones. One day we're going to have a show on the included stones and I'll show you a lot of those, but rose quartz is a really good stone to have around. Um, okay, so I've talked about this before. But um, 
Carnelian is one of those stones that you don't read about in books for depression. It doesn't say anything about Carnelian because Carnelian is kind of a, an organizer stone. It's supposed to help you feel organized and, and, and focused into, you know, get all your focus lined up so you're not all over the place. But I've, I've had people come in my house and I've said, I want you to just walk around and tell me what you are attracted to without looking for the shimmeriest stone. I try to guide people to look for energy as opposed to just what appeals to how it looks. Although it's nothing wrong with being attracted to stones because of how they look. If that's all you do, that's okay. This is, this is not a show of you must do this and you must do that. We don't want to do that. Um, but I had a couple of people, one, one was in the throes of depression really bad. She'd been through a breakup right before marriage. Her, her man left her and she was just devastated. She went and picked up a carnelian. While I'm talking about this, I'm going to show you some carnelians. Carnelian comes in orange, red. Some of it has this blue. It is an, it's an, an agate, uh, like I was saying earlier. Agates are typically not see-through. But it's got some multi-minerals in it, but it's an orange to red agate color. But she, she grabbed onto one and just wouldn't let it go. And I was like, I, I thought it was unusual, but I wasn't judging about it. I just didn't really think that this stone would be something she would pick. There's another. This is a palm stone. You call a palm stone something that's easy to hold in your hand, good for meditating, you know. Um, and then I had another friend come over that um, is a big drinker. Uh, not not judgment from me, just I know there's a lot of drinking that goes on, and I think that she's depressed a lot. Um, wonderful, special person. Um, and so I asked her to go around and see what she liked. Well, she picked a Cornelian, too. And I thought that was just the oddest thing, because these women don't know each other. And, you know, most people are going to pick something sparkly, as, or, or I just wouldn't think they would pick an agate. But here's another Cornelian. You can see... Um, the darker pieces, you can also see quartz in the middle of that, and the more orangey quartz on the other side. Of course, I love the dark red carnelian, but they all serve the same purpose. But this this friend picked carnelian as well, and she just wouldn't let it go. And the one thing I could see on their faces is, you know, typical stress lines would just kind of ease up. I could see anxiety ease up in both of these ladies. Oh, this is an unusual cornelian, one of my favorites. It just looks like a blob of something that's been painted, but it's not. It's, there's natural cornelian agate. They just come in so many different you know, formations and colors um, that you, you have many to pick from. Um, here's a cornelian heart. And then I also had another friend come by that had just gotten into rehab for I, I think it was crystal meth or crack or something like that. They, they've been off of it for, I think, maybe four months and off of alcohol and anything else. If you go to a 12-step program, most of the time people are coming off of everything. And he was fidgety, and so I, I, I just was putting stones in his hand. I wasn't even talking about it. I just was putting them in to see what he would do. And so he had a rose quartz little palm center, and he was flicking it around and around and around. So I decided to just put a carnelian in his hand because I'd already seen this happen twice, right? So I put that in his hand. And he went from this look like this to he just looked like he was as, as peaceful as he could be. And I said, do you, do you understand how clearly you changed your whole demeanor by holding onto that stone? And he said, yes, I do see that. You know, and of course, you're going to have skeptics with stones. We know that. Um, but there is support out there for vibrational medicine and the fact that they are naturally found in the ground. They do carry a vibration. It's measurable. Um, so, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't believe it or not. But you wouldn't be here if you weren't a little bit interested in it, right? Um, okay, I've got another Cornelian for you. Um, this one. is got. You can see the quartz in it, too, again. And you can see just the different coloration, which I love. But anyhow, I think that's uh, that's almost, to me, the most powerful stone of all of them, other than protective stones. It's not known as a protective stone, but I have seen it calm people. Now, the one, I will tell you this. I had somebody that was a workaholic, you know, wanted to be working and thinking and going all the time. That person did not like the stone because it made him calm completely down to where he wanted to go to sleep. So he didn't like it. But everyone else that I've shown it to mess with it love the calming effect of it oh here's another one i want to show you too looks like one of those little weren't they like 
the shells from the beach or something that looked like this when we were growing up and you would find them at Myrtle Beach in the store. I, I can't remember what they're called, but I know I've seen them before. But this is actually a carnelian. It doesn't have a little thing on the bottom where you can put your fingers, but it's, it's pretty cool. Okay, so I was going to read, I was going to read something from the crystal book, Crystal and Healing, Crystals for Healing. And I've said this before too, there are a million books out there on crystals. And there are a million opinions on crystals and what they can and can't do, etc. And I would tell you that, you know, like I've said before, take what you like and leave the rest and use your instinct. Because intention is everything and your instinct should guide you a little bit. You know, I, I've, I've heard a lot of different opinions on stones through the years. And um, I just kind of do what works for me and I'm okay with that. And I'm okay if, if you want to do something different. It doesn't matter. Um... Now we're looking at depression, despair type stuff. So depression, it, it, it's calling for a clear quartz grid. I would suggest, and, and we've talked about grids before. I don't use them very much. I just have so many stones. I don't really have a need for a grid exactly. But a grid is when you put a stone and you kind of do a Mandela shape. You want to put them evenly spaced to get an energy vibration from them grouped together. And in this situation, I would put a rose quartz in the center, and I would put some clear quartzes around it, and I'll show you that's kind of how it's set up. This is just a minor grid. People do some very elaborate grids with many, many stones and many, many intentions. Again, anything is okay, but for me, if I was trying to do just a general love, calming, happy grid, it would be rose quartz. The clear quartz around it amplifies it, because clear quartz is known as an amplifier. But it also says smoky quartz, and amber is a stone here, but amber is glass. It's not a mineral, but it's found naturally, naturally formed glass. And there are a lot of things out there like obsidian, same thing, volcanic glass. Um, and then we look at despair, and it's got smoky quartz, celestite, which is the crystally blue I showed you. And it's also got pink calcite. I think I've got some of that, but I don't have anything sitting here right now to show you that. But at any rate... What I'm hoping is that you can find some kind of stone that brings a little bit of comfort and maybe talk to some people that, that you know you know that you can express those feelings because I think they do tend to disappear more when you talk as opposed to just not talking and living with it. And nobody should be that sad. We all see the, the results of that and nobody deserves that. We all deserve to be loved and respected and know that we're not alone in this world. Um, for people that are spiritual, I, I believe God is with us. Uh, I know when I was, um, I used to be in the field doing my professional job, traveling a lot. This is before cell phone use. We had cassette tapes, and I would listen to Norman Vincent Peale, who's a minister and an, and an author, and he just has the sweetest voice. He talks on this power of positive thinking, and one of his mantras is, God is with me, God is helping me, God is guiding me, and i I tell people that all the time because I say it all the time. It became such a mantra that it's stuck in my head. And when my father passed, I would sit there and, and when you don't have anything else to say, you know, you're just so in such sadness that you can't think straight. God is with me. God is helping me. God is guiding me. I would say it over and over again. If I woke up in the middle of the night, I would say it and I would fall asleep again. So it's one of those things that uh, has helped me greatly. So I thought I would share that with you. Another thing we do is we do a crystal pull or a card pull, daily crystal inspirations, just to give you some inspiration. Um, and what I do is just kind of pick randomly and see what comes up, because a lot of times we get a card that I think is, speaks to what we're trying to talk about a little bit. Let's see. Okay, Lemurian Quartz is the, the card. This is a picture of a Lemurian Quartz, and it looks like clear quartz that you've seen before. It's got a little hematite coloring at the bottom. Let me do the reading for it, and, and we can see what it says about it. Just now I saw it. And these readings don't really correspond to mineral uh, spiritual guides. It's just, it, it correlates to it a little bit. You'll see what I'm saying. Okay. Well, what the reading for it is, slow down. There's no need to hurry or rush through life. There's enough time for you to do everything that you need to do. Learn to quiet the restless part of yourself. See, that's exactly what we're talking about today, because... The carnelian will quiet that restlessness in you and anxiety. Um, and, and take life one step at a time. There is a difference between being busy and being productive. 
Make sure you spend your precious time on the things that matter most. Patience is not something you acquire once and never have to think of again. It's a practice, one that must be consciously drawn upon even when your poise is tested. And believe me, I need this, okay, because I'm not very patient. Um, <clears throat> go with the pace of nature and trust that everything will happen in due course. A little mindful patience makes the everyday more enjoyable so that you can appreciate life's natural pauses. So, and with that, I was going to tell you something else, another story. Um, a couple of years ago, I had my first Thanksgiving alone. And I've traditionally had spaghetti for Thanksgiving. I got tired of turkey a long time ago. So I would do spaghetti and cheesecake and garlic bread. But I was really terrified of having the holidays alone. It just I was just afraid because I am sentimental and sensitive that I will, it would just make, be too sad. So I made the dinner as usual. And I sat three extra places for my grandfather, my grandmother, and my father, all three that have passed. And my father had passed pretty recently. And I thought, how am I going to sit there and eat with these three places? And I'm not watching TV like I would do if I'm alone and eating. So I had my little places set, and I put three wine glasses for them, because you know we're having some red wine with spaghetti, right? And I poured a little wine for them. And then I sat, and I told them each everything I could think of I was thankful for about them when they were alive and what they taught me. Granted, there are plenty of things I wasn't thankful for, but I didn't focus on that, I'm trying to practice gratitude here. And it was Thanksgiving. So in the time that I did that, it was just surreal. It was just the best spiritual feeling in the world. And I wasn't depressed anymore. And I, I was so thankful that I spent the time thinking of those things that they did for me when I was little. Even the smallest things I mentioned to them. And I was very, very grateful for it. And I wanted to read you one more thing about about the blue stone, the celestite stone we were looking at. Um, celestite, a.k.a. Celestine, purifies the aura of humans as well as other beings. It can be helpful in anything ranging from day-to-day -day living to supporting healing to enhancing relationships and more. It's just an extra blurb on celestite because, it's again, there's a lot of different things out there. Okay, I'm looking at some... Questions. Let's see if I can answer any. Regular sleep with amethyst and carnelian. Good. That's Aaron Swartz. You know, I have friends that won't sleep with amethyst because it keeps them up, and I kind of don't sleep with it either. It's a kind of a matter of what you think is a more exciting stone that will keep you up and not. Let's see. Susan Walliger, thank you so much. You're so sweet. Oh, goodness gracious. I really appreciate that. I want you to know how much I appreciate you guys and this platform and Edgar Casey and being able to be here and share what I know. I don't know everything, but you know, it's just, it's a passion of mine, clearly. Um, what is the best time for someone going through a health crisis? Well, it depends on what the health crisis is. I always try to tell people, you know, there's nothing that takes the place of real medicine for real medical issues. Stones are supportive. They're not miracles. Um, so, it just depends on what the crisis is. I would have to, you can email me and I can give you a little more guidance with that. I think any stones we talked about today would help you. I have no, I, I have no, no problem with that. Blue Angel, like disturbed sleep or dreams, can it be in a bedroom? Mary Roach, hi, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I don't think so. Any of these softer angel stones to me don't cause that problem, but you have to try it because if you don't, like it then you just know that it's got a little bit too much action for you that's how I feel about amethyst it's a little active even though it's supportive it's just something I don't have in my bedroom I do have celestite in my bedroom which is the shimmery and the blue angelite I don't but I just don't have a whole lot of blue angelite so it's just I don't have it in there but I think it would be fine um Can hear but not see. I don't know what that is. Uh, Linda Raleigh, do you sell the Moonheads? No, I don't, Linda Raleigh. I actually saw one and went crazy for it, and I found it and found it. And found it. <laughs> I finally found one at this art place in Colorado. So they're out there. They're not that easy to find, though. Um, let's see. Lithium used for bipolar. Yes, of course it is used for disorders that uh, that would you know lend itself to being calming. Um, but it's kind of nice to have it uh, in your hands and, and rather have it in, you know, taking it. It's a, a lot more minor that way, of course. Uh, let's see. 
You know, I know when I first started the show, something blipped, so it might have been the first few minutes something happened. I, I hope it's okay now. Uh, blue banded blue agate, blue lace agate. Yeah, same thing, Joyce Jasko. It is the same thing, um, and it's very good for um, depression and, and despair of grief. It really is. I just wish I had some more. I, I, I it literally interrupts when someone joins or chats. Oh, I don't know, Lisa Giampaolo. I'm not sure. I can tell you, the show is recorded. You can go back and look at it anytime. It it'll be there forever. Just search it on the Edgar Casey page. And again, I'm here once a month, but those shows are out there. You can go through and speed them up or look at any part you want to. And again, thank you so very much for coming. We're at our 30-minute mark, and I'm going to stop the streaming. Um, but with that, I will wish you a wonderful Thanksgiving and that God is with you, helping you and guiding you always. Much love and many thank yous.